So this will be a brief tutorial on how to get started with setting up a scene and running it in VR using Vizard, the Python-based virtual reality platform for researchers. We'll cover getting a few models out of Sketchfab, adjusting your starting point, scale and lighting, setting up the scene, um, adding the ability to pick up objects, and then saving out a file that tracks the position of a user along with the timestamp and grab events. So let's get started. This is the uh, main window that opens with Wizard. So this is the uh, IDE where you can add Python code to build your scene. And uh, there's a lot of built-in functionality and pre-written code that comes with Wizard specifically for building VR scenes. So it won't be too daunting to get started. And you can also go to the help section and search the documentation to find code examples of whatever you're trying to do. So the other two tools that I'll be focusing on is VizConnect, where you can set up your specific hardware with an easy-to-use GUI, and Inspector, where you can build your scene. So here I am at Sketchfab, which is a great place to get 3D models, as they have an immense library of over 150,000 Creative Commons free models that you can use. And uh, if you don't have an account, you'll have to make a free account before you can download. And so this is just one of many content libraries for 3D models that you can find online. There's also like Turbo Squids and CG Trader and a lot more. So first I'm going to find an environment that I can use. So I'm going to go over to the search bar and then you have to click downloadable for the ones that allow you to download them. And then there's some paid ones. And then there's also, like I said, over 150,000 free models that you can use. So I'm just going to search for a room. And so this is a room that I like here. So I'll click on this and then you get a preview mode. So this allows you to preview and see how the model is going to look. And then you go down and you just click download 3D model. And you're going to want to click on auto converted GLTF since uh, GLTF will be probably the most consistent format that you can bring into Wizard. And so I'm just going to click download and then when that's downloaded, it'll be in a zip file. So you just unzip that file and then you open the scene.gltf file in Wizard's Inspector tool. So you can go over to Tools, Inspector, and then you can go to File, Open, and then open up that uh, scene.gltf file. And so now this is the model opened up in Inspector. And so this is a Wizard's Inspector program. So you can hold down the left mouse button to kind of pan or rotate around and then use the middle mouse button to uh, zoom in and out and then hold down the right mouse button to translate your viewpoint. And then the first thing I'm going to do is check the scale since a lot of objects coming out of, out of Sketchfab um, don't have the scale coming correctly. So Wizard uses uh, meters so if you click here up on this, on the left, we have all of the nodes of the model. So if you click on the root node, you can see here, this is giving you the size of the model. And one way I like to check this is I just bring in an avatar from Wizard's resources by going to File, Add, which is how you add additional objects in Inspector. So if you go to your Program Files, World Viz, and then in the wizard folder under resources, you can bring in just the avatar model. And so now this, you can see that the model is really too, way too big. And also where the avatar comes in is where you're going to be starting when you put on the headsets. So that's your origin point. So the way that I'm going to scale the um, model is I'm going to have this root node selected on the model. And I'm just going to click on here on the uniform scale. So that scales everything at once. And I could either enter in numbers here if I know the amount that I want to scale it, or I could use the uh, scale tool here and just kind of do it that way. And so next I'll adjust the starting position. And so you can see the avatar here is where you'll start in the scene. And so to do that, I'm going to also be on the root node of the environment model. And then I'm going to click on the translate tool. And I'm actually just going to move the environment so that could start where, where I want the origin point to be at. 
So maybe there's probably a good. And then once I do that, I can actually delete the uh, avatars. It's not needed anymore. And this model is using baked lighting, but I could also go if I wanted to here and go and create lights. So spotlight or point light or directional light. And then also over here, once I add a light, I have the ability to adjust the intensity of the light and then the color and then also sh whether shadows are going to be on or off. And then I can rotate the position of the light. And then I could move the light around if I want to. And then sometimes you won't see any effect on, on the model. So you want to see if lighting is actually on. So you can click here on the geometry and then toggle whether lighting is on or off. So that now the light should affect the model. but so I'm not going to actually use that light, so I'll just get rid of that. And so you could just here right click and then go to delete for deleting objects. And then I'm just going to go with the baked lighting. So I'll turn the light off. So now that my model is set up, um, I'm going to save it in a folder where with wizard, you want to save your models that you're using and your wizard scripts, so your Python scripts, and also things like if you're using any media and your um, hardware configuration files, you want to save that all in one folder. So I'm just going to save this and I'm going to go and create a new folder. Call it wizard sample scene. And then it's usually good practice if you, especially if you're going to have a few models just to create a separate folder for putting your models in there. And then I'm just going to call this kitchen. So now I'm going to open up the wizard editor and you're going to want to go to file, new wizard file. And just, you could type out, so import viz is the main module that you need to get all of the wizard functions. And then you use VizFX for models that have shaders. And then Viz.go to open up a graphics window. And you could just uh, name the model. And then you do VizFX.addChild. And then you put in the uh, name of the model that you have in your resources folder. So the path and the name of the model. And if you're not sure what the name of the model is, you can right click here on the uh, tab and go to the resources folder and you can see the name of the model. And so now I can run that and then it'll just use Wizard's default navigation. But now if I want to add my own hardware configuration, then you'll use the uh, VizConnect tool and so you go up to Tools, VizConnect, and then you want to save this also in the same location. And then the, you can call this whatever you want, but a standard that we usually use is just VizConnect underscore config. And you can reuse the same hardware configuration across multiple scenes. So once you create it, you can just copy it over to your other applications that you're building. And here, if you go to the uh, preset configurations, you can select from Oculus and Windows and Vive and a lot of different configurations. It's using Vive Tracker. So I'm just going to click apply on that preset. If you go to the advanced tab, you can see there are just hundreds of different types of devices. I think there's over 150 hardware devices that we support. And so there's lots of different trackers and displays that you can add and input devices set up an avatar, um, different transports that you can use to move objects around and tools such as a grabber tool and custom events. 
And so now that I have that set up, I'm, then I'm going to just need to add the viz connect module. And then I'll just use vizconnect.go instead of viz.go. And then you uh, put the name of the vizconnect file here. And so now if I run this, it'll be, it'll run in the Vive headset. And so now I could view this in VR. And so next I'm going to uh, show you how you can add a couple more objects to your scene and then grab those objects and interact with them, collect some data. So I had a couple more objects that I got from Sketchfab. So to add an object into Inspector, you go to File, Add, And then when you add an object, it comes in on the uh, origin. And then you could just go and select the root node of that object and go up here to the uh, translate tool, or you can rotate it, scale it. And so then you could just use these tools to place it where you want, want it in your scene. And when you're working with individual objects in Inspector, you can click on an object and then click the Z key to zoom into it or you can uh, also double click and then as well as a uh, shift click if you just want to put that object in focus by holding down shift and then left clicking and so i have these objects positioned here at this table and now what you want to do too is you want to right click on the object and go to rename and then just rename it something that you're going to remember so that you can use it in your wizard script. And now if I want to be able to grab those objects, then I can just open up the vizconnect file here. So it's here on the resources tab. You can see your vizconnect file and whatever resources you're using. And if you go to the advanced configuration under tools, and then you have um, the grabber tool, and then we're just going to use this without physics. So um, you can uncheck that and then you could choose whether you want an outline to show when you grab an object and then just click apply and exit and then now this will be uh, printed to the right hand and if you want to grab with, the, with both hands and you can add a second grabber tool and then this one you need to uh, manually, manually drag under the left hand node of the avatar and then lastly you want to gonna gonna want to map um, what's going to be the button that you're going to use for grabbing. And this here is the additional code that you would add for grabbing objects. So you just name the object here and then you use the name of the uh, environment model and get child and then this is the name of the model that you had named here in Inspector. So you could even just go and right click and copy the name and then paste it in there and uh, add as, just add all the objects that you want to uh, interact with. And then you add those to a list here and I'm calling that grabbable objects. And again, I have this code in the description. So if you want to just use this as a template, you would just add whatever objects up here from your environment model that you're going to grab and then add them to this list. And then here, this is just getting a handle to the grabber tool in your VizConnect file that we added. And now this is saying which items are going to be grabbable. So you make that this list. And then this is just repeating the same thing for the left hand grabber tool. And so now I can go around and grab these objects in the scene and right now the objects are just set to stay in midair after I grab them and now since the next thing that we're going to do is collect some data you're probably just going to want to create a folder in the same folder where your project is and then just call it data 
and so that's where we're going to save our data files to. And now this last section of code here is where I'm collecting some data on the uh, position that I'm in in the scene and then also when an object is grabbed. So the first thing here is just getting the uh, participant information. So this is um, the ability to ask a question here that will be stored. So this is just asking a participant's number. And then viz.tick is basically a timer that counts in seconds. So you're defining this as the start time. And then this code here creates a data file. So it creates a text file. Or you can make it a CSV or a PDF or other files. <clears throat> and I'm just calling this the uh, session data file. And now this is uh, a function here so that when an object is grabbed, it'll first uh, find out how much time has passed. So it's saying the uh, starting another viz.tick minus the uh, start time that I defined here. So that'll give you the current time. And then saying if the object that's grabbed is the uh, dirty cup, then it's going to save to the file the uh, participant ID and then say, and then it's just going to add this text that that cup was grabbed. And then if the uh, clean cup is grabbed, then it's going to collect that data and write that to the file. And then this down here is just the ability to then call this function with the grab event. And so that's the code for this. And again, this is code that I'll have saved that you can access. And now this is, is creating another data file for collecting the tracking information. And so this function is getting the orientation position of the um, viz.main view, which is your main view in the scene, and then the position. And then it's making that into a, a string where it's saving that to the data file. And then this is being called with the vizact on timer. It's every uh, frame, it's calling this function. You could make this instead of the function for grabbing an item, it could be the function for that you that a user pressed a button or entered a certain spot, which you would use a proximity sensor for. So you have different options as well as tracking different uh, parameters. And so now if I run this, then I'll, I'll be able to uh, save that data. Also up here, I just added this line that uh, allows for full screen anti-aliasing samples. And so you add this before you add the uh, .co and that'll just uh, make the scene look a little sharper. So now I'll go ahead and run this. And so it's going to first ask for a participant number. So I'll just put number one. So now if I go back to my data folder, so I'll see now I have the uh, session data that said when I grabbed each cup and what time it was in the scene, how many seconds. And then now this is also uh, saving the um, orientation and positional data. Also for some information on how you could use this tracking data to replay your scene along with eye tracking metrics, ask us about our VR eye tracking analytics lab. So this is just a quick example of some of the basic things you can do with Wizard. Stay tuned for more tutorials, take a look at the documentation, or send us an email at sales at worldviz.com to learn how you can perform a wide range of other research related tasks in VR. And remember to hit the subscribe button and visit our website at www.worldviz.com to see all the other VR solutions we offer for research and enterprise clients.